Hey everyone, welcome back to another Beast of the Mesozoic Ceratopsian series review. Our journey continues through Wave 2 and next up is the Wendy Ceratops. This is another species from Wave 2 that I was very excited for. As of right now, this is the only Wendy Ceratops figure available. It's always exciting to get new species that have never been made before in figure form. This beautiful figure retails for $69.99 and is currently available to order directly from Creative Beast Studios. I'll leave a link to their site in the description of this video. And for those of you outside the U.S., I'll also leave the link to Everything Dinosaur. They should be getting this wave in very soon. So let's just go over the packaging really quick. Just like every other figure in the series, you get a nice sleeve with some beautiful artwork on the front. And I really love how the artwork on this Wendy Ceratops turned out. It's definitely my favorite of all the sleeves that David has shown off so far. I just love the eyes on this thing. This thing just looks absolutely freaking adorable. And then for the top of the box, you get the Beast of the Mesozoic logo. Side of the box, Beast of the Mesozoic logo, Silhouette of the Triceratops. And on the back of the box, you have the checklist for the rest of wave two along with some facts on the sleeve about wendy ceratops and just like all the other figures in the wave you get a nice collector card with that same artwork and like i said these cards are really nice quality and same thing you get the facts about this species on the back so enough about the packaging let's take a look at this gorgeous beauty all right, let's start with a nice 360 degree view of this adorable figure. I really love the amount of articulation available on this series. It has a lot of character and personality to the figures, and I just love the sitting pose. It just makes these things look absolutely adorable. And the color scheme is really vivid on this figure. The color scheme is based off the Galapagos Island Land Iguana. Main body is a deep maroon color. You have some bright orange mixed in there, some white markings along the back. You have some splashes of yellow along the side of the neck and side of the skull. And then you have some bright green blotches on the side of the face and also on the frill. So yeah, pretty interesting color scheme, but I like how all the colors blend together and I'm really digging it. Now let's just do a couple quick measurements. This figure is 12 inches long from the tip of the beak to the tip of the tail and just about 5 inches tall to the top of the frill. So Wendy Ceratops in real life was around 20 feet long. So with those measurements, I'll put this figure in the 120 scale range. So let's zoom in and take a look at some of the finer details on this figure style with this beautiful head sculpt. The flat rounded nose horn of Wendy Ceratops is beautifully represented. There is even some fine texture on the nose horn that is highlighted by a dark wash. The eyes painted a bright green with a black pupil. You can see all those bright green markers along the side of the skull right here. One right just before the nostril and a couple more on the frill. You can see that nice deep maroon color all highlighted by all this beautiful scale work get some nice bright orange mixed in there highlighted by some white and then going down to the beak you can see the beak is painted a nice brown color the brow horns are also nicely sculpted you have a nice dry brushing of a lighter color to kind of break up all that dark brown the horns on the frill also nicely painted very fine texture and you kind of kind of have to really look close to see it but it's definitely there and they're painted a nice brown color and let's let's look at the front of the skull and then going down to the lower jaw you can see some bright yellow and some more of that beautiful scale work and then going down to the neck you can see some more yellows and maroon and white mixed in and then going down to the main body you can see some large scales picked out here and there you get some more of that dark maroon color highlighted by that really bright orange then on the top you get some nice white markings to help break up all that dark maroon color you can still see more of those large scales picked out in there and then going down to the front legs you can see they're also bright orange you have a nice dark maroon color now there is a small issue with my figure when I took it out of the box, I was looking it over and I noticed my front feet are brown. That is the correct color, but however, uh, whoever was assembling this figure at the factory did not paint the uh, feet on mine. It should have a nice dry brushing of this maroon color to break up all that brown. Now, that being said, um, I think brown plastic was probably a bad choice for the front feet of this figure. I would much prefer that they use the yellow plastic and then just dry brush it with the maroon. I think it would be a much smoother transition. Just looks really out of place by using brown plastic for the uh, front hands. But uh, other than that, that's just a really tiny critique on this figure. Actually, the only critique I have on here. And, you know, I've been collecting action figures for a long time and you know every once in a while you do get a mistake on your figures it's not a big deal i can easily dry brush this over and make it look a lot better i mean it's not as bad as you know forgetting the red stripe on a certain jeep or anything and you can also see the 
toe claws are picked out in glossy brown paint and turn the figure over. The underside is a nice white coloration. That white coloration goes to just about the midpoint of the tail and it's highlighted by more of that bright orange. And you can also see a little bit of a cloaca slit right here. And then going down to the hind legs, you can see more beautiful scale details, some nice muscle definition. You got more of that dry brushing over the feet right here. Like I said, I just kind of wish the front feet were sculpted in the same color as these hind feet. I think it would just be a much, much smoother transition. You can see more of that dark brown glossy paint. And then going down to the tail, you can see more of that dark maroon color and a little bit of that bright orange striping going to about the midpoint of the tail. So yeah, I really like the vivid color scheme on here. I know these color schemes aren't for everyone, but it just really gives these figures a unique look. All right, let's move on to articulation. The mouth can open about that far. You don't want to open it too far because then you start to see the seam for the lower jaw and it can close pretty much flush. It just You can see a little bit of a gap between the top beak and the lower beak and opening the mouth. Let's just take a look in there, see if my uh, camera can pick it up. You can see some teeth sculpted in there. They are picked out in white paint and this figure actually does have an articulated tongue, it is way, way back in there. Uh, you wouldn't even notice unless you're looking directly down the throat and you can move around a little bit if you wanted to, but it is pretty far back, but it's always nice to know that is included and you can definitely move it around if you just use a tool to manipulate it. And then going to the head, the head can rotate from side to side and swing a little bit from side to side. The neck can look up pretty far and you can get some pretty good downward motion. And this, let's look at that motion from the front. You can get some nice side to side movement with all those joints. And then going to the front legs, arms can move forwards, they can move backwards, and you can get about, oh wow, these joints are incredibly stiff. And I usually work these over too before the review, but they are super tight. So you don't have to really worry about these joints uh, wearing out. Get about 90 degrees of bend and the front feet can tilt a little bit and they do have some nice rotation. Going down to the hind legs, they can rotate backwards and forwards and same thing, you can get about 90 degrees of bend on that knee joint. There we go. <laughs> these things give me a workout when I do the articulation parts of these videos. And then you get a little bit of articulation at the ankle right here and rotation for the feet and a little bit of tiltage and then for the mid part of the body you get some nice side to side moving I'll show that off from the top to show you how much you can get for the midpoint and you also get some nice rotation and you can also angle up the hind quarters a little bit and angle them down and then going down to the tail tail can move up it can move down and it can move side to side and like I always say these tails come unattached when you get the figures, you just gotta heat them up a little bit with hot water and just force them over the ball joint. So enough about articulation, let's move on to comparisons. All right, first up for comparisons, here it is with one of the Mattel Jurassic World figures. Here it is with Dennis Nedry. And next up here it is with the PNSO Sinoceratops. And I brought out the Sino because Wendy Ceratops is believed to be closely related to Sinoceratops. And here it is with the PNSO Parasaurolophus. That's because Parasaurolophus is found in the same formation as Wendy Ceratops, the Lower Oldman Formation. And next up, here it is with another PNSO figure. Here it is with their Wilson T Rex. And why not? Because I have this abomination to the side over here. Here it is with the Papo Giganotosaurus. And next up here it is with the Mattel Jurassic World Triceratops. And next up here it is with the largest figure in the wave so far. Here it is with the previously reviewed Pachyrhinosaurus. And lastly, here is the Beast of the Mesozoic Medusa Ceratops. These two figures share the same body. And the new Ava Ceratops. Now the reason I brought out these two Ceratopsians is there are five Ceratopsian species in the Lower Oldman Formation. So right now, Beast of Mesozoic has given us three of them. We are getting a fourth one in Wave 3, the Alberta Ceratops. So we're just missing one species, and that is the Judy Ceratops. So maybe sometime in the future, David can give us some more Ceratopsian species. Since 90% of the work is done, we have all these different body types, and all we really need to do is just sculpt the new head.
So final thoughts on this 1D Ceratops. It's a fantastic figure. Just like all my previous reviews on this line, I absolutely love these things. They're just so much fun to play around with, and I have barely any complaints about them. Now, my only major critique on this figure is obviously the use of brown plastic on the front feet. Yeah, I know mine's missing the dry brushing, but like I said, just kind of wish they went with the uh, yellow plastic that's used for the, the back feet. It would have blended much better with the front feet, but other than that, it's a fantastic figure. And I absolutely love the vivid color scheme. I just like how all those colors kind of mesh together and just a lot of nice contrast going on. And like I said, at the beginning of the review, you can pick this figure up directly from Creative Beast Studios. The link is in the description. And I also left the link to Everything Dinosaur for those of you that are outside the US. So that would do it for the review. I just got my box of new Collecte figures in. So I'm gonna start working on reviews for those. So expect at least a couple of those sometime this week. And I still have to plow through the rest of uh wave two i think i'll probably do the anio ceratops next and remember as always if you're enjoying the content on this channel show your support by hitting that subscription button just below the video each subscription helps out the channel tremendously and it's greatly appreciated and i'll see you guys for the next one